Hi, what you see on the screen is called limit notation. This is a concept that is central to all of calculus. So let me show you how to read this and then we're going to do some simple examples graphically so you can understand what this means intuitively. So this is read as the limit of f of x as x approaches c is equal to l. And basically this means that when x gets really close to c, f of x gets really, really close to L. So with limits, we're concerned with what happens to f of x, which is the y value, when x gets close to c. What does it get close to? Let's do a simple example with a graph so you can see exactly what a limit is all about. This will be our y-axis, and this will be our x-axis. So this is x, and this is y. And let me pick a fun color here for this. So I'm going to put a little hole here, and I'm going to put, uh, actually, let me not put the hole there. Let me just put it over here, and then I'll put a little line here, and this will be our function here. There we go. Okay, so now we can write down a limit based off this graph. So hopefully, this will make a little bit more sense. So if I write LIM of f of x as x approaches let's say three. And I'm gonna put a little minus sign here to indicate that we're approaching from the left. So when you have a minus sign, that means you're approaching from the left. If you have a plus sign, it means you're approaching from the right. If you don't have anything, like here, that means it's both directions. So what does that mean? When x gets really close to the number three, which is here, from the left, the y value gets really close to the number one. So the answer is equal to 1. 1 is called the limit. In this case, because we have a limit and it's a real number, we say that this limit exists. So this exists. If it's not a real number, it would be does not exist or infinity or negative infinity. We'll look at those cases later in this video. But for now, let's just focus on this one. So again, approaching from the left, the y value approaches 1. Let's take the same problem, and this time let's approach three from the right. So in this case, we're coming from the right. So the x is getting really, really close to three, and the y value is also approaching one. So this is equal to one. So the limit as x approaches three from the right of f of x is equal to one. You'll notice that there's a hole here. I did that on purpose. That's to emphasize that we actually don't care what actually happens at 3. We just care what happens when we are close to 3. In fact, if you try to compute f of 3 based off this graph, this is the y value when x is equal to 3. But there's a hole, so it doesn't make any sense. So it's undefined. You can say undefined, or you can say d and e, which stands for does not exist. I personally think undefined is a better answer because it's something you might be familiar with from other math classes. Let's do another example with a graph just so you can get a better grasp of what's going on. So there's the y-axis, there's the x-axis, so x and y. And this time let's do one, two, I'll put a little dot here. And then one, two, three, I'll put a hole here and we'll go this way. And let's compute some limits here again just so you can Again, understand the intuitive notion of a limit. Let's approach the number two from the left of the graph of this function, which we'll call f of x. We switch colors here. So here's two, and we're approaching from this direction here. So from the left, we're getting infinitely close to two. Looks like the y value gets close to one, right? Because that's one right there. So in this case, the answer is one. So we say that the limit of f of x as x approaches 2 from the left is equal to 1. Let's approach 2 now from the right. So now we're approaching 2 from the right. So we're coming this way, and this time the y value is getting infinitely close to, looks like 1, 2, 3. So this time the answer is 3. You'll notice something different happens in this example. Here, when we approach 2 from the left, we get the result of 1. 
When we approach 2 from the right, we get the result of 3. These are different. This means that the regular limit, just the regular limit, the two-sided limit here of f of x does not exist. And I forgot to tell you that in the first example, it actually does exist, right? Because you've got 1 in both cases. So in this case, we say the limit as x approaches 3 of f of x is equal to 1. Because remember, this means both directions, right? So whenever you see a limit and there's no plus or minus, you need to be able to approach from both directions. And honestly, it really only, in practice, it mainly comes up um, in problems where the limit is not going to exist or where it's going to be infinity. And it also comes up in problems with piecewise functions. But for the most part, um, you know, and other types of problems we'll be doing later, we won't be dealing with the one-sided limits. It mainly comes up in graphing problems and in piecewise functions. Okay, let's do another example just so you can see uh, just more variety here on, on limits. So this time I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to go over here to th 3, and let's put a vertical asymptote here. And the function will do this. And it will do this. And let's say this is 1 right here. This is the, the point 1. And let's compute some limits here, just so you get some more intuition on how to compute these limits. Let's compute the limit as, let me improve my handwriting a little bit here, the limit as x approaches 3 from the left of f of x. So in this case, we're coming towards 3 from the left. And the y values just get big forever. They just keep growing without bound. So in this case, we say the limit, uh, we say it's infinity. Okay, now this doesn't mean the limit exists. Okay, for the limit to exist, it has to be equal to a real number. That's a technicality. So something to keep in mind. So a limit will only exist if it's equal to a real number. Just like up here at the beginning, we have L here, L here. This is a real number. Now you can also compute limits with functions of complex variables and get complex numbers, but that's not something we're going to discuss in this video. Let's take the limit as x approaches 3 now from the right of f of x. Switch colors here. So now we're getting infinitely close to 3 from the right. This time as you see that the y values, they just fall, they go down forever. So in this case, f of x approaches negative infinity. So in this case, we have that the limit as x approaches 3 from the left is equal to infinity. The limit as x approaches 3 from the right is equal to negative infinity. So in this case, we would say that the limit as x approaches 3 does not exist. Now, if it were the case that they were both infinity, we would put infinity here. But if you remember, it still means that the limit does not exist. A limit only exists if it's equal to a number. So anytime you see a number, the limit exists. Just a technicality that I think sometimes people forget. Let's do one more example, just one more basic example. So again, it doesn't matter if there's a hole or not. Um, that's not relevant. It just matters what you're getting close to. Let's just mix it up a little bit here. Let's put a little hole here. And uh, let's put... Um, a dot here and let's come down this way like this and let's just do that and then put a little dot here this is one let's compute some random limits here just just to have a little bit of fun let's take the limit let's find the limit put a line here to separate our train of thought as X approaches uh, let's say two from the left so X is approaching two from the left so we're coming from this direction here. Sorry, not two, 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 uh, negative two. A little messed up there. Let's do negative two from the left. There we go. I wanna focus on this. This is negative two, not two. <laughs> so here's negative two. So we're approaching from the left. So you see the y value gets infinitely close to one. And there is a hole there, but it doesn't matter. You know, it doesn't matter if there's a hole or a dot. We only care about what happens to f of x, which again is the y value when x approaches negative 2, in this case from the left. If we are approaching negative 2 from the right, 
So now we're going this way. You see the y values get infinitely close to, looks like three, right? One, two, three. So in this case, it's three. So that would mean that the limit as x approaches negative two of f of x, well, that's going to be d and e, right? Because they have to be the same. They have to be the same. Let's look at some more limits. Let's keep going. Let's take the limit as x approaches zero from the left of f of x. Well, as you approach zero from the left, the y value approaches two. So the answer is two. Now let's take the limit as x approaches zero from the right of f of x. Well, if you approach zero from the right, again, it approaches two. In this case, these are the same. And so the limit as x approaches zero of f of x is equal to two. So whenever both numbers are the same, the regular limit is two. That happened uh, in the first example up here, right? We had the limit from the left being um, one, from the right it's one, therefore the regular limit is also one, right? So something to keep in mind. And then in this example here, um, these were different numbers, and then so it was D and E. In this example here, we had infinity and negative infinity, they weren't the same, so it's D and E. So if they're, if they're not the same, whether they're numbers or infinities, the answer is always D and E. Now, if you get infinity and infinity, the answer is infinity. But again, uh, technically, the limit does not exist uh, unless it's equal to a number. In this case here, we have different numbers, so again, it's D and E. And in this case here, we have the same number, so uh, again, it's... Uh, the same number. Let's do let's do one more. I wasn't going to, but why not? Just for the sake of learning, just so you see it. So let's do just another one. Uh, I think we've covered all the examples, so this is going to be a little bit repetitious, but let's do it anyways. Uh, let's do negative one, negative two, negative three, one, two, three. Let's do something like this this time. I'm going to put a little hole here, and I'll go this way. And then this is going to come up like this. And it's going to come down over here like this. There we go. All right. So you've got a couple points of intersection there. And this will be 4, 5, 6. All right. Let's just do some simple problems here. Uh, let's find the limit. And we're going to be a little bit bold here. Let's find the limit as x approaches negative 3. We're not going to just, I'm not going to write down any one sided stuff. We're just going to do it. So if x approaches negative 3, remember, you have to get the same result from the left and from the right. So approaching from the left, looks like we get 0, right? The y value is 0. Approaching from the right, looks like we get 0. So the answer is 0. Both one-sided limits are 0 because from the left, it's 0. From the right, it's 0. Let's approach 2. So approaching 2, so here's 2. So from the left it's zero. From the right, it's also zero, so the answer is zero. Let's approach three. Limit as x approaches three of f of x. So three is here, and looks like the y values approach negative three. Right, again, from both directions, it's negative three. And the last one we can consider in this problem that's a little bit easy is one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, when you approach six from the left and from the right, you're also going to get you're also going to get zero. So the limit as x approaches six of f of x is zero. So hopefully you get the idea, right? No matter which direction you approach from, you get zero. Let's go over all of the examples we just did one more time, just for clarity, just to make sure you get it. Uh, so notice this doesn't use any algebra, by the way, right? So in theory, anyone can learn this. So in this example here. Um, we were approaching 3 from the left, the little minus sign means from the left, and the y value gets infinitely close to 1, so the answer is 1. Notice there's a hole, and that was on purpose just to emphasize that it doesn't really matter what happens at 3. In fact, at 3 it's not defined, or you can say D and E if you prefer. So it doesn't matter. We just care about what happens when we're really, really close to 3. What happens to the y value, which is f of x, when x approaches 3? The y value approaches 1. From the right, we also get 1. Because it's the same from the left and the right, we say that the regular limit, or the two-sided limit, is equal to 1. In this example down here, we were approaching 2. 
So from the left, looks like we get one, looks okay. From the right, looks like we get three, looks okay. These are not the same, so therefore the limit does not exist. This example here was a little bit different. In this case, we approach three from the left, and this goes off to infinity, so the answer is infinity. Now, whenever we write infinity, you should also note that that also means that the limit does not exist. A limit exists only if it's equal to a real number. But we still write infinity because it's more descriptive. This tells the reader that when x gets infinitely close to 3 from the left, the y values grow without bound. That's the correct mathematical way to say it. So that means that f of x is approaching infinity. Here, we're approaching 3 from the right. And so the y values decrease without bound. That's the correct mathematical way to say it. So it approaches negative infinity. In this case, because they're both different, we put D and E. Now, if it was the case that they both approach infinity, and I'll just show you right here, say it was one, two, three, and let's say it looked like this. In this case, uh, the limit as X approaches three of F of X, well, in this case, this goes up forever from the left, it goes up forever from the right, so in this case, it's just infinity. Right, so in this case, the two-sided limit does exist. It's still D and E, though, because remember, it has to be equal to a number. But infinity is more descriptive, and that is why we write that. Um, in this example here, we did a couple different limits. We approached negative 2 from the left. Looks like we get uh, 1. Approached uh, negative 2 uh, from the right. Looks like we got 3. Yep, from the left, we got 1. From the right, we got 3. Therefore, the regular limit, or the two-sided limit, does not exist. Uh, when we look at 0 from the left, we get 2. From the right, we get 2. So the regular limit is also 2. And this last example was really not that bad. In this case, we just ignored considering the one-sided limits and just did it all in our head. And we did that because we knew they would all exist, or I did at least. <laughs> so I made up the problem. So as you approach negative 3, you're going to get um, 0. As you approach 2 from both directions, you get 0. As you approach 3, you're down here at negative 3. You see, that's how was this one here. And as you approach 6, uh, you get from the left and the right, you also get 0. So those were those limits there. Uh, again, that, that negative 3, let me just explain it one more time just in case. So we're approaching 3 is a different color. From the left, the y value approaches negative 3. Approaching 3 from the right, the y value approaches negative 3. Therefore, when you approach 3 from both directions, the regular two-sided limit, the y value, which is f of x, approaches negative 3. So what are limits for? Well, we use limits in calculus to define other constructions that are made up, right? All of mathematics is made up. It was made up by very smart people a very long time ago. And then other very smart people in the world came along and they found uses for it. You know, these people are called physicists, engineers, and mathematicians themselves have found uses in the real world for mathematics like this. So limits are used to define something called a derivative. A derivative is basically a function that describes the rate of change of another function. And also for integrals, those can be used to do various things in mathematics, like find areas or volumes of solids. I hope this video has been helpful. Good luck.